You know, Northern Ireland is a very special place. It's magical. I mean, of course, these incredible colors of green and also the food. You can't forget the food and the history and the coastline and the activities. There's so much to do here. I love it. Welcome to the wonderful world of travel. I'm John Haggins. I'm here with Niall Gibbons, and he is the CEO of Tourism Ireland. And it is such an incredible thing to see you again. Your event the other night was so fantastic. Everyone came out because Ireland, you know, it was interesting. The other night I was at an, another event and everyone was talking about how Ireland promotes and they are so on it. And they said they would like to do that too. And I said, well, you got to catch up. <laughs> so how are you? I'm great, John, and thanks for having me on the show. It's always a pleasure to be back. And uh, I think it was last year this time we were, we, were, we were on the show as well. But And thank you for coming the other night. It was a really special occasion oh, absolutely. because to come over to the United States uh, to showcase the, the island of Ireland is a great honor and a privilege. But to see so many people turn up from different backgrounds, it's a great example of how you know, the family all comes together uh, to support the destination. And I was looking at some of the people that were there, the, all the airlines that service Ireland, Aer Lingus, United, Delta, American. Uh, we had the travel trade. We had our diaspora, you know, of whom there are over 30 million people claiming ancestry here. Uh, our diaspora media, who are very strong too. Uh, our diplomatic service, both from Ireland and Northern Ireland. Right. Uh, so it's great to know that you have the support of these people, and that's what's helped us drive an amazing tourism agenda from here in the United States to Ireland over the last 10 years. Well, you know what I think is amazing is, as you said, it was so eclectic in terms of the people and their interests in Ireland. And, you know, for instance, the Epic, inter uh, what is it, Epic Immigration Museum? Yeah. Unbelievable, an experience that everyone should have. But Ireland has so much to offer, you know, from the, the green rolling mountains to the history, to the harbor, to the beaches, to so much. And of course, <laughs> the liquor, the beer, <laughs> and the whiskey, you know, it has so much to offer. And, and it's just a wonderful place to go and see. I'm so excited about going back because we're going to see the Galway Art Festival. How fabulous is that? It's terrific, and I think that was one of the key messages that we had the other night. There's something for everybody in Ireland. So, you know, if you don't have ancestral backgrounds, there's a great program this year. You mentioned Galway. It's the European Capital of Culture for 2020. It's a very prestigious uh, denomination, which uh, will give us great publicity around the world. And there's a great artistic program going on. So if you are a lover of the arts and a lover of culture, uh, Galway is definitely going to be the place to be. Uh, you mentioned uh, drink and food and drink in general. The culinary scene in Ireland has really uh, undergone an amazing renaissance over the last 15 or 20 years. And it's not about maybe you know, eating in top-class dining restaurants. It's actually eating where the locals eat and it's discovering the food that they eat and the story behind the food. And um, you know, it's, it's the, the natural landscape where the ingredients come from and the stories behind that. Might be going to a cookery school, even learning to cook a few Irish recipes. It's a, enduring great popularity. But I'm glad you mentioned Epic Ireland because that story of the Irish uh, is really important and it's been captured in that uh, museum which tells an incredible story about Irish migration around the world. My name's Colin and I'm very glad to have you down here in the first gallery of Epic the Irish Immigration Museum where we tell the story of the Irish diaspora, a 75 million strong community of people around the world that share Irish connections, whether it be far or whether it be very close. And I mentioned the 30 million plus people here who claim ancestry, but you go to countries like Canada, Australia, New Zealand, in total over 70 million people around the world, and now they can go back and discover that journey, where they came from. It's a very emotional experience I've seen, particularly people from the United States, to be able to go back to the homestead that perhaps their uh, um, ancestors came from maybe 150 years ago. Oh, absolutely. You know, it's, um, I think, it, as you said, it's not just for the Irish people, it's for everybody to have this experience and to go back and then to discover what you know, Ireland is all about. You know, you have Northern Ireland, you have the southern part of Ireland, and it, I don't really see the difference between the two. You know, uh, as a tourist, I don't see the difference. I mean, they're all wonderful and have a lot to offer, and uh, it's just a great island to be on. You know, what are some of the plans for 2020? which is what you were talking about the other night. Yeah, well, I mean, you're right. It's a very small, compact island. That's something people from the great big country of the United States might not appreciate, that you can get around Ireland actually quite easily. You know, all the major car rental companies are there. You can fly into Dublin on the east coast, Shannon on the west coast. It's only about 150 miles wide by about 350 miles long. So, you know, all uh, main cities well-connected and very easy to get around. And if you do go to Northern Ireland or you go to the Southern Ireland, 
we drive on the same side of the road, you won't notice any difference on your <laughs> journey. But for this year, uh, it's, it's very exciting, really, um, what's going on. You know, we've got everything going on from the, the golf, which is a huge uh, aspect for, for people who may be into a uh, sport from the United States in particular. We had the Open last year, which came to Royal Port Rush. Ryder Cup is coming back to Ireland in 2026. A load of really good golf courses. Lynx courses, particularly, uh, very popular with uh, North American visitors. More in Ireland than any other, any other country in the world. Amazing for a small island. Um, as I said, food and drink as well. Uh, and a, 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 an event called Taste the Island, where we're really clustering a lot of existing food festivals, food trails, you know, everything to do with the culinary experience. Because, again, there's a whole dialogue going on around culinary tourism at the moment. And Ireland has got a lot to offer in that particular space. In Northern Ireland, we've got Titanic Belfast, which tells the story of the ship where it was built. My name is Emer Carney, and I am Head of Marketing at Titanic Belfast. So Titanic Belfast is one of the world's leading tourist attractions. We're located here in Titanic Quarter, exactly where RMS Titanic was built over 100 years ago. We opened in 2012 to mark the 100th anniversary of the sinking of the ship, and it has been a phenomenal success for tourism in Belfast since. So, at this exact location is where thousands of men from Belfast built the world famous liners from Harland and Wilf and Titanic was ship number 401. It had a very fateful maiden voyage, but we celebrate the success of what was achieved in Belfast all those years ago. The maiden voyage was a tragic situation, but what happened in Belfast wasn't tragic. Titanic was a world-class liner. It was one of the largest man-made moving objects in the world at the time, and we're very proud of that heritage. And our latest thing in Northern Ireland is Game of Thrones, screen tourism, uh, very popular with what we call set jetters. Uh, people like to go to see where the eighth um, series of Game of Thrones were filmed, and a new attraction opening this year, a bit like Harry Potter Land in London, is going to be in Northern Ireland uh, celebrating Game of Thrones. It's backed by HBO as well. That'll be opening in the fourth quarter of 2020. When did they first start doing that in terms of elevation of the food? I think there's been, you know, movements going on over the last 20 or 30 years. A lot of pioneers, really, you know, enthusiastic, passionate about food. And I think what's unique about Ireland is that it's a small, green, clean, environmentally friendly uh, island and the authenticity of the ingredients that go into that food are, are really special. I think when you come to countries, uh, sometimes people might think of corned beef and cabbage, but the agenda has <laughs> moved long beyond that. Uh, and I think now, you know, if you're looking for grass-fed beef, if you're looking for seafood, you know, look no further than Ireland. Um, but the story of the, what ends up on the plate is, is about the, you know, the people that were involved in it, the planting and sowing it, the farmers, uh, and I generally won't have traveled too far. And the unique stories are, are important to the tourism story because in a world where a lot of things are becoming homogenized and globalization is the name of the game, uh, I think to get something local uh, that's simple um, you know, and really well crafted and presented uh, speaks volumes where Ireland has gone in terms of the culinary experience. Well, you know, in Belfast, we had a wonderful experience in terms of dining because we had a six course pairing of incredible wines and it was just an incredible evening and it took about two and a half hours but it was just another course another wine and it was just such a relaxed experience and everybody there you have to make reservations way in advance for this place because it's just fabulous and people need to know that they're wonderful dining spots you know and as you said the locals where the locals eat that's where you should go because they know you that's know, right. and I, this is one of the things I do when I go away. I look in the window and I see if there are locals there, then I know it's good. And a lot of them enthusiastic, passionate about what goes on the plate. Uh, and I think in the, in the Instagram era that we live in, uh, <laughs> you know, people like to show off uh, when they get something really good to eat. And, and it goes out there and it goes viral and people talk about it. And there's no better marketing than word of mouth. Tell me about the art in Galway. Well, I mean, Galway, I mean, as I said, this year is European capital of culture. Uh, there are a lot of festivals and events that are going on. It's a uniquely bohemian type of city. Uh, it's, it's really retained its sense of Irishness. Uh, and in relation to the festivals that are going on, there's everything around the arts scene in general, uh, from literature, poetry, uh, all sorts of festivals going on through the course of the year. And the Galway program for 2020 uh, has really uh, brought on some incredible uh, exhibitions that will be going on during the course of the year. It will be important for anybody who's interested in art uh, to, to get on to look at that program because there really is something to tempt everybody. It launches in early February, uh, that's when the launch date starts, and there are a whole range of things 
uh, that will tease any part of the intellect, so to speak, over the coming 12 months. Uh, obviously, a lot of local artists participating, but there will be people coming in from around the globe as well. I think that's something that's you know unique to the arts, that Ireland is also good at bringing people in from abroad. Our people have gone abroad for hundreds of years, uh, and now it's really about people coming back. Uh, it's about sharing ideas, uh, and I think that's, you know, one thing that Gold is going to do very, very well. It's a great stage. Let's talk about the ease of traveling from Southern Ireland to Northern Ireland. You don't need a passport. So how easy is it? You won't even know you're going from one jurisdiction to another, uh, apart from the fact that we have signs in kilometers for speed in the south and miles per hour in the north. But other than that, I mean, it's a seamless journey. And even in the Brexit conversation that's going on at the moment with the UK leaving the European Union, there will be no impact in relation to travel around Ireland this, this year. So it, it's never been easier to get to Ireland. There's never been more seats. But when you do get there, I mean, all the road networks are well connected. So a journey between Dublin and Belfast, for example, is about two hours by car. Uh, very easy to do. Roads are motorway uh, network nearly all the way. So easy to get around. All the major car hire companies are there. Uh, you, you'll need an international driver's license, but you know you won't be stopped. There's no border checkpoints. It's a seamless journey. Well, I think that's one of the things I think Americans are concerned about. You know, the the fact that you need a passport, don't need a passport. You've uh, you've clarified this, so I think it's really terrific. People should know this. It's uh, a great factor when you're going from one place to another. But you know, you have these wonderful towns like Cork and Kilkenny and all of these wonderful other towns that people normally don't talk about, but they need to see more of the island. It's not just Dublin and Belfast. It really is all these wonderful other areas. Uh, Kinsale, for instance, which is a beautiful, colorful little town. Unbelievable. These are the things that people need to know about Ireland, and it has lots of different personalities. I mean, each town has its own personality. What I found fascinating was that this bar uh, man, he also does a mortuary. So he says, you can, once you, you what do you, drink them to death, <laughs> which is literally what happens, <laughs> you know, when he takes care of them. And I thought, how unusual, I had never heard of that before. I think you make a really important point because, you know, you can travel to the city and, and you'll get a sense of, you know, what it means to be Irish or Northern Irish. But I think you have to get out into rural Ireland to really experience the heart and soul of, of the character. Uh, and that's what we you know, talk about Ireland. We talk about the character and characters uh, that they bring Ireland to life. And you, know, you, you can travel to all these cities within a short space of time, as I mentioned before. I mean, if you go to Donegal in the very northwest uh, of the island of Ireland, very rugged, very outdoors, beautiful scenery, beautiful beaches, uh, good surfing, by the way, too. Uh, a great culinary experience in Donegal as well. Uh, if you go to Westport, you know, you've got a, a beautiful small town, one of the few planned towns in Ireland, actually, but really good quality accommodation, good quality restaurants as well. Great outdoor activities. If you want to take the Mayo Greenway, you can cycle on a 50-kilometer uh, track off-road, so very, very safe. But in the most stunning landscape you will come across anywhere, and you'll go right out to Ackle Island, and then the next stop is going to be America. Uh, so it really is on the edge, on the edge of, um, of Europe. Down around Cork, Kerry, a lot of activities, a lot of tourism activity, uh, and getting off the beaten track has never been easier either. West Cork, very popular for its food. The West Cork Food Festival, for example, takes place uh, around the um, September, and there are over 180 events around the whole food scene. So if you're, if you're a foodie, that's one that I can definitely recommend. I've done it myself. The wonderful thing is that you're so thin because these are natural, <laughs> organic foods, you know, with no hormones, and I think it's the best way. It's right from the garden. It's from the garden to the table. I think our, our, our chefs have put a huge effort into making Irish food really special. Uh, food trails are very popular, food festivals. Uh, I mentioned the West Cork Food Festival, which is on in September. But there's also oyster festivals, seafood festivals, uh, and these really you know, bring the, the destination to life, so to speak. I think that's what's really special about some of those, uh, those things. So a lot of choice on Ireland.com has got all the information in relation to all the information you need in relation to where those food trails and food festivals are. But going from strength to strength, and I think Ireland being a small place, it just adds to the character uh, and the food and drink of course go go hand in hand as well <laughs> we mentioned the other night about the renaissance in irish whiskey which had seen a decline in the 19th century but now we've got about 30 different whiskey distilleries on a, an irish whiskey trail uh, which brings you all around the coast of ireland uh, and you get a chance to sample it too which oh is yeah. good like a bush mill bush mills up in northern ireland yeah really really popular uh, there's an irish whiskey museum in dublin you've got uh, you know down in dingle there's a distillery as well they're they're dotted around the country so it's a good a good rural trail but certainly i think what the people involved in whiskey have done is they've, they've used it to tell the story uh, of the destination of where it comes from and that's been uh, a really important part of the tourism story as well and also the ale the beer which is another 
uh, part of the culinary experience. No better place to come to <laughs> Ireland. We've got the Guinness Storehouse, the most popular attraction uh, in, in Ireland, 1.7 million visitors, who are now opening an extended bar at the top of their visitor attraction. That will open in March. So we're very excited about that. But also uh, they have a sister uh, brewery down in uh, Kilkenny called Silix, uh, which is at Ale. Uh, really nice and they have a lovely little attraction down there as well where you can go and learn all about you know how it's made it's all part of the brand experience really uh, and I've done that myself too so I can highly recommend it. That's fantastic there's so much to see and so much to do now when you talk about the oysters are those festivals near the coast so it's really fresh they select them and they bring them on, on board uh, and so therefore this is a whole other experience uh, rather than inland it's all very very fresh. Yeah, one of the most popular ones is called the Claren Bridge Oyster Festival and that's just outside Galway, it's a small town and that festival has been going on for a long time. Again, details of that are in Ireland.com, Claren Bridge, a small little town but again, I think it's the oysters form part of what is a lot of fun. Oh yeah, <laughs> well I think you know, people love shucking them, you know. And, exactly. And, uh, and when they're fresh, oh my God. And they have shucking competitions and everything, the, the whole really? range of things going on during the course of the festival, yeah. Wow, that sounds incredible. Good fun, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you're in the heart of rural Ireland, and I mean the most important part is that you're going to get a really warm welcome. The people that you meet will, will really embrace you. Uh, we love Americans coming over, you know, uh, not just searching for their roots, but also to come and have a bit of fun too. But also you have these great castles, you know, from the past. Where do we start? I mean, yeah. this is going back, you know, hundreds of years, uh, and there, there are a number of things you can do. Some of those castles have been converted into hotels. So, for example, Dromoland Castle in County Clare, Ashford Castle in Galway, offer five-star top-quality experiences for people who want to stay and really get under the skin of, of what it was like to be in those castles a long time ago. Uh, and then there are just castles dotted all over the countries that are more ruined and historic sites, so to speak, that are part of the tourist trail. Uh, and actually, when we look at what our, our friends here in the United States look for in our heritage, the castles are probably the most popular thing in terms of the history of Ireland. Because again, they tell the story of different invasions that took part in Ireland over the last 1,000 years of our history. Whereas the history here in the United States is much more recent. Oh yes, yes. But also, you can, some of them you can rent for an event. You know, which I think is fantastic too. You, I think it's amazing because they feel like you're living in the castle when you're having an event. You know, it's going back in time. It's Absolutely, fabulous. yeah. And I, I think you, know, you, you really get the, the essence of what Ireland might have been like. There are actually some of them on Airbnb as well, which is just interesting. Um, so, so plenty of opportunities in relation to castles, and, and you, you're just really you're absorbing the history of Ireland when you have that experience. Well, I thank you so much. And we'll be right back. John Higgins' Globe Trotter is like no other travel book in the world. When I think of travel, I think of friends from around the world. I've traveled to Malaysia, Thailand, India, everywhere. You're going to absolutely love the book and the recipes. You will whet your appetite with these incredible aromatic recipes. Remember, my world is your world. So get up, get out, and travel. But talk about some of the sports, for instance, like the Greenway, biking along the Greenway. Uh, an unbelievable experience and the ocean is right there or the bay it's it's unbelievable yeah I think outdoor pursuits are something that are becoming much more popular I think people are now fitter they're healthier and um, they're not looking to, to sit indoors uh, when they're on their holiday because it's just so important to you know live and breathe at the experience of what Ireland has to offer uh, walking is something that's really popular in Ireland a lot of walking trails you know w w well marked uh, right. Cycling is very popular too. I mentioned the Greenway in Mayo already, which is on the west coast. There's a Greenway also down in Waterford, which is over 50 kilometers long. That's on the southeast coast. So again, really popular because you're along by the sea uh, and, and the, the views are just absolutely not really stunning. Amazing. Uh, you know, if people like to fish, uh, if they like to golf, uh, if they like to surf up at the northwest coast of Ireland, uh, there's some really good surfing in Donegal and Sligo as well. But certainly I think from my perspective, I, I'd recommend Ireland as a walking destination. I think just there's, there's nowhere better to spend time with family and loved ones than to be able to get out on a coastal walk or a hill walk and I think what people really enjoy about Ireland is the scenery it's the landscape it's probably one of the big things that we get in terms of feedback it's the beauty of the landscape the natural green island it's not called green for nothing <laughs> you'll see it when you fly <laughs> over and when you land to, to get out and experience it it's, first well, it's kind of like a sweater with lots of different patches because the green changes you know from one scene to another so I, I think of it as a green patch sweater you know yeah that's it's good, really good beautiful. definition yeah, yeah patchwork quilt yeah 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 and I think also what happens is that, uh, you know, in terms of activities, uh, you have the wonderful beaches, as you said, taking the helicopter up and seeing the coastline where the Game of Thrones was filmed. My God, everybody's excited about this. This is a great trip. This is something that everyone should do. 
Yeah, Game of Thrones has been an amazing success story for Northern Ireland, where they filmed in various locations, and we've worked very closely with HBO, uh, calling it Northern Ireland Game of Thrones territory. It's been fantastic. But all those scenes are, are really special. They're absolutely iconic, beautiful spots. And, and the movie, is, or the series, has brought them really to life. So you don't just need a helicopter if you want to go and participate in a Game of Thrones banquet, uh, go on a, a tour of the various sites, uh, engage in archery, uh, engage in the activities that were there you know, during the film of the series. It's all there for you to see. And a new visitor attraction coming on stream for Game of Thrones at the end of 2020 as well. We're very excited about that. And horseback riding, oh my God, unbelievable. The Sheehan Farm going up the hill and then stopping for lunch unbelievable experience and looking over the valley through the greens I mean unbelievable everyone should have that experience well I think so and that's uh, very doable around Ireland again Ireland.com is all the information on those types of activities but again it's, it's getting active in nature and that's the feedback that we get from a lot of customers as well um, you know so it's great to meet the friendly people have the fine food that you, you like as well but you know having your holiday in Ireland is about switching off and about getting away from the busy uh, humdrum lives that we all lead on a daily basis and uh, to get active in nature is something that's very important to people. Well it's an introduction to a whole other world which is very calm, very peaceful and relaxed as you said. What could be better than that? Well, I mean, it's, it's a small island with a small population, so there's plenty of room for everybody. And the other thing that we're seeing, too, is, you know, that the, the summer season, obviously, running from sort of May to September is when a lot of people would come. But we're finding now with quarter one, and particularly quarter four, a lot more Americans coming. Uh, because really, you know, weather doesn't matter. Ireland is almost sometimes a short break destination for a younger customer that we're starting to see come now. Because you can be in Shannon Airport uh, from New York in five hours. Uh, you're in Dublin in, in less than six. So it's actually almost now a long weekend trip for some people as well who just want to have that opportunity to experience Ireland. So plenty of things to see, plenty of things to do. A warm welcome will await you, but never been easier and quicker to get there. But the other night you mentioned that uh, the American or the American tourism has increased enormously. Uh, to what proportion? We have seen it double over the last seven years. Uh, I remember coming over here to launch our marketing plans around 2011, 2012, and we looked forward to the day when we welcome one million Americans coming to Ireland. Well, last year we welcomed two million. Uh, I have to say, I didn't see that one coming. But uh, <laughs> that's good. I think working with our partners in the likes of Aer Lingus, you know, American Airlines, United, Delta, we, we've seen a huge expansion in air capacity into Ireland. Uh, it's a really popular destination, got a really good reputation amongst American visitors, seen as a very safe destination and friendly and warm and welcoming. They're the core things that people from this country are looking for. But um, we, had, we now have air access from, for example, Seattle, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Dallas opened last year, and that's expanded already this year. Uh, Washington, D.C., uh, New York, Newark, Charlotte, uh, Florida, Miami, Orlando. So, you know, gateways now, I think it's 17 from the United States, uh, and more to come, hopefully, uh, with our partners in our lingus by the looks of things, by 2025. What about Chicago? Oh yeah, I should have said, have hard to remember the ball, and Boston, <laughs> you see, the list goes on and on. There was a time when we only had seven gateways, so it's hard to keep track of all these places. That but you're growing all the expanding. time. Expanding, yeah, it's yeah. great. So, I mean, a service like Boston, for example, going all year round as well, so these aren't all summer services, there are many that are running all the way through the year. And there's great value when you come in the off-peak as well, by the way, because if value is important to you as a visitor, um, there's a lot of hotel capacity uh, that's there in the winter months that's, that's much uh, better value than it might be during the peak summer months. And are you increasing more rooms? There are more rooms under construction, yeah. Uh, Belfast has seen a 50% increase in hotel rooms over the last three years. Wow. So there's a great anticipation of increased tourism in years to come. We're seeing increased capacity in Dublin over the coming years as well. And towns like Cork and Galway are seeing new hotels being built. But I think you'll find that even the existing stock of rooms that are there are have fabulous quality. And the feedback that we get from the travel trade is that the quality of hotel rooms in Ireland tends to be better than any other country that you'll get in Europe because they're quite new. They've been built really over the last 15 or 20 years. So obviously the castle experience can give you the, the, the heritage, uh, but, but a lot of them have been refurbished over the last number of years too. So it'll be top quality and really they do meet the expectation of the American visitor. Are they large hotels that they're building now or medium sized? You tend to find the hotels in Ireland are smaller than maybe than some of the international standards. So hotels in Ireland will tend to be you know, less than 100 rooms. Uh, some of them are family run, which adds to the experience of what, what you'll see. I think that's the important thing. It's a, rather than talk about the rooms, it's the quality of the experience and the quality of the welcome. That's the feedback that we get from our customers from here. It's really good. It's the personal touch. Yeah, that's exactly you it. Know, yeah. I mean, knowing that you know the owner who's you know, going through the hotel, and they're available whenever you have a question. 
How perfect is that? It's great. I mean, they're great ambassadors for the regions. When you get into rural Ireland particularly, I mean, the owner of the hotel really cares about, you know, their, their visitor from the United States, uh, you know, and they'll know a lot of what goes on in the local area. And they're the owner, they're also the concierge, and they're also the ambassador, and they'll be able to guide you on your journey. That is fantastic. Chasing Wild Ass, oh, it's not what you're thinking. It's a narrative of my travel around the world. I have interspersed photos and aromatic recipes which allows you to dream, discover, and rediscover these great destinations around the world. The title of the book came about while we were chasing jackasses in Koch Wild Ass Sanctuary in Gujarat, India. And I thought that was a great title for the book. This is food for the soul. Not only does it allow you to dream, it's adventure, it's history, it's culinary, it's culture, with a sense of humor to spice it up. Chasing Wild Ass is a celebration of life. You have to live each day as if it's your last. Remember, my world is your world. So get up, get out, and travel. Let's talk about the music. You know, the music festivals. Well, if you want music, Ireland is the place to come. There's no question about it. Whether it be a contemporary, traditional, uh, my personal favourite is always the traditional impromptu music session that goes on in bars uh, across up and down the country. Uh, if you visit County Mayo, for example, on the west coast of Ireland, there's a pub called Matt Malloy's, and uh, it, it's just amazing. He was in the Chieftains Band, which has got worldwide notoriety. They've been playing for 50 years now, I imagine, and they'll be playing in New York City on St. Patrick's Day. But Matt Malloy's pub is, is one of the probably best traditional music experiences you can get, which are you know happening up and down the, the, the whole uh, island of Ireland. And uh, I think just the idea of walking in, receiving a really friendly, warm welcome in a cosy pub with a pint of Guinness in your hand, listening to traditional music is just high-end Irish culture. <laughs> we had that experience in Derry, as a matter of fact. The owner there was just so fantastic. And uh, after, you know, we, I was so excited that I had to tape him because he was just so you know, open and wonderful. And he said, why don't you have a, you know, a, a beer on the house? I said, you know, thank you so much, but we've got to run. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we have to, but the generosity, just warm and absolutely incredible. Yeah, you the know? feedback we get from people all the time, uh, particularly Americans, is that it's, it's one of the most authentic expressions of Irish culture to hear traditional Irish music. Uh, you know, because it, it has its roots, you know, and its connections w with America as well, like in the bluegrass movement and everything. And you go to places like Nashville, for example, here in the United States where I've been, and the connections with Ireland are so close. It's actually twinned with Belfast. Oh. But the traditional music scene is very strong in Ireland, uh, always has been and always will be. And what about the dance as well? And dancing too, and no better expression of that than river dance, which celebrates its 25th anniversary uh, this year. Uh, so congratulations to them. But you know, it's an expression again of, of art, uh, Irish art and culture that's been around for hundreds of years. And uh, very popular here in North America too, but I think when people go back home, uh, Irish music and dance is a very strong part of our culture and artistic endeavor. I think it's fantastic. Thank you so much. And I want to say that this has been an incredible experience, this sharing Ireland and all the great memories of Ireland. You have to come. It's a great destination that I think everyone should just hop on a plane and go. Until next week, I'm John Haggins, a Globetrotter. I'll see you then. So long for in now. In my wrestling and in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out.